Let me introduce these uh, these gentlemen to you. Okay, over on the far left here, on your on your right, we have David Yang. David got his BSCE with us here in 1991, his MSCE in 1993, and his PhD in 1997. He currently has been named the executive director of the uh, American Automobile Association Foundation for Traffic Safety, operating out of Washington, D.C. Okay, next to David is uh, Brian Harlow. Brian Harlow, and of course David was the transport specialty area here at Civil. Brian was environmental, the next gentleman. Brian Harlow, BSCE 78. He's Vice President, Manufacturing for Chrysler Corporation out of Auburn Hills, Michigan. And right here next to me is Robert Holden. He did his uh, BSCE in 1990, MSCE in 1992, and his PhD in 98. And uh, he's Vice President of Wessler Engineering in Indianapolis. He's environmental. He's done many, many things in wastewater treatment plant design. Okay. Dan Liotti, right there, kind of in the center. Dan, BSCE in 1985, President and CEO of Midwest Mole, Greenfield, Indiana, Washington, D.C. Those are the folks that do the unbelievable hole digging under the ground at some angle. I know nothing about it, but it sounds pretty good. <laughs> okay, all right. Then we have Brian Quinn. Brian Quinn uh, is a PE, BSCE 1989. MSCE 91, president of Southeast Solutions in Holly, Michigan, uh, and uh, he's out of Camarillo, California as well. Structural engineering does much to help structural engineers keep up to date, that's for sure. And then we have Rudol Rudolfo Gideon right here on my left, BSCE 1960, MSCE 1961. He's president of Petro Quimica Colombiana in South America, it's called Petco and out of Cartagena, Colombia. Come all the way, wins the prize today for coming the greatest distance indeed. We really appreciate uh, everyone that's here today. We, 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 we picked the very best of our graduates to be honored on this particular day, Civil Engineering Alumni Achievement Award Day. We're very happy to have them with us, obviously. So, so what do we do here this morning? Well, I'm gonna give these folks the chance to tell you about themselves and how they got to be so successful. What was their, what was their secret, if you will? And then we'll open it up for general discussions. So, who would like to start? David, you're in Washington D.C. Works for the president. Is you might as well start. This <laughs> okay, you go ahead. Right now, my, my last name is James, so I usually wait until the last. You know, <laughs> being the last person. See, you see, I, I, I fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> Well, thank you, uh, Professor Jacko. Um, it, you know, it's a great honor and great privilege of uh, being back here in the Civil Engineering Building. I was telling Brian earlier, I had some of my structural courses here in this very classroom, and those are not very fun memory for me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I became a transportation major after my uh, my, uh, my master and PhD. Um, you know, kind of just kind of tell you a little bit about myself. I'm currently the executive uh, director for Triple A Foundation for Traffic Safety. And before that, I spent about my career with the uh, federal uh, government, the U.S. Department of Transportation. And it, it has been very, very interesting for me. And, uh, you know, right now overseeing basically the entire research and development arm for the entire Triple A. Um, as many of you or many of some of your parents are Triple A members, uh, it's, it's very humbling right now. You know, a lot of time when I go out to, to uh, provide presentation and so forth. Some people you would show me like triple A card, kind of saying, well, I'm a triple A member. And uh, what we do uh, within Triple A Foundation is to do um, basically traffic safety research. Uh, I don't know if you guys know the statistic, but uh, on the annual basis uh, in 2016, there's about 37,000 people die on the road every, every, every year. So when you divide that on a daily basis, we have over 100 people die on, on our roadway due to various reasons. So traffic safety continues to be a big concern. Um, we do research related to issues like uh, impaired driving, distracted driving, drowsy driving. We are also looking to research um, in the future. I'm sure many of you have heard about the promise of autonomous vehicle, self-driving car, and so forth. 
So we do all those research to make sure that in the future we can make transportation safer and safer. Because every time when someone dies on the road, we look at it from the from the analysis point that's a citizen. But that's also a family member. Could be a dad, could be a mom, could be a teenager who just uh, learned uh, how to drive. So our mission at Triple A Foundation is trying to improve uh, traffic safety. And uh, I feel very fortunate because for me, is I enjoy uh, doing something I feel very passionate about. And that started out with, uh, you know, for me, uh, one, one thing uh, Professor Jacko asked is, what's, how, what's my path to uh, success? I really, I think for me, uh, when, even when I was a student, I think, you know, my advice is really one of, you need to follow your passion and don't be afraid of taking chances. One of my favorite quote is from, is from Mark Twain. Um, it says, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the thing you did not do than by the by the one you did. So throughout the boat line, sell the way for a safe harbor, catch the trade wind in your sail, explore dream and uh, the river. <coughs> and I think that's how I sort of um, I would say captured my career so far. I uh, when I was uh, 17 years old, I left uh, Hawaii to come to a place called West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, my dad asked me. Uh, where is uh, where is Indiana? I said somewhere in the Midwest. So in my you know at 17 years old, I arrived to the campus here. I've never seen snow in my whole life until that very first winter. It was a cold winter too, because I had my winter jacket on. In, I think in September. Some of the guy in, my, in in Gary Hall where I stayed at my freshman year said, you know, if if you're wearing a winter jacket right now, how are you going to handle when the real Indiana winter comes? Yeah, that, that, that was something true. But for me, is I really want to really go out to see the mainland. That's how we call it in Hawaii. Kind of see what's out there. So I took the chance. I came all the way to uh, West Lafayette. And one of the reasons I came here is because one of my childhood heroes was uh, Neil Armstrong. You know, the first man on the moon. When I was a little kid, I heard about him. And I was wow, so great. And when I found out that he graduated from Purdue, it was sort of set the deal for me. Is I want to come to a school where uh, they produce, uh, you know, to my in my opinion, one of the really one of the pioneer in um, in um, kind of space age. So I took that chance. Um, after I graduated here, as I and then you know, ten years later, when I finally left Purdue, I came here with uh, two suitcases and and just by myself. I left Purdue with uh, my wife. I met my wife here, and then two of our sons. Um, uh, three, two of Two of our sons, our first two, was uh, born here in Indiana. And then I, uh, Dr. Uh, John Furker was my PhD advisor. And uh, Dr. Furker and I would ask me, okay, so what do you want to do next after you got your PhD? He said, well, you know, I really want to go out to, uh, to, to the West Coast because that's how I feel my calling is. And Dr. Furker, I said, I remember, he set me up with some interview, some, some job in Indiana. But I didn't, I just, my wife and I, we just never feel comfortable that we want to stay here anymore. Nothing against the great state of Indiana. But we figure we got two Hoosiers, right? So, so we need to go out and kind of explore. So again, we, we took a chance. We went all the way to Seattle, Washington, and uh, didn't have a job secure. But I knew that with a Purdue degree, I can probably find a job not that difficult. So we got there, called up. And then uh, this, uh, I said, you know, I just recently got a PhD and looking for a job. And the other person said, well, let me transfer you to my office manager. Got, he got on the phone. I said, Mr. Uh, Mr. L. Green, I said, uh, I just recently graduated from Purdue. He starts to laugh on the phone. I said, there's something I said funny. He said, well, I also graduated from, from Purdue. So when can you start? That's how I got my first job. <laughs> And then, really, just kind of thing going. I was working in a consulting firm, and then three years later, um, the, uh, the federal government called me. And then, again, I took the chance to move my family from Seattle, Washington, to uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Spent three, uh, four years there. And then uh, uh, the DOT headquarters in Washington, D.C. called me. I moved to D.C. Um, I could have a very successful, uh, secure job in the federal government until I, my retirement. But toward the end of uh, 2016, I decided, you know, um, you know, it's time for me to do something different. 
And that's when the opportunity came up, and I went through a long interview process, and then uh, at the end of 2016, I was selected as the executive uh, director for Triple A Foundation. So I think for me, is I have always been following my passion, following what I want to do, and just kind of knowing that something that will be, always interest me. That's really my secret of being successful, I guess. So follow your passion, right? Mm -hmm. Follow my that's passion. That's the bottom line. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And Brian, did you follow your passion? Mm -hmm. I did. All right. Yeah. So I've been with uh, Fiat Chrysler under various names over the course of time since graduating from Purdue here in uh, 1978. And uh, today I'm a head of manufacturing for North America. So we have uh, about 68,000 employees in uh, Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. And uh, we're targeted to build about 3 million vehicles this year. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities and, and a lot of opportunities for uh, Purdue grads as we go forward. So um, it's interesting to me, though, as I've already had a chance to, to meet some of my uh, fellow honorees. And, and they mentioned being in the Department of Transportation. Last night, this is how things intersect. Uh, I was in Washington. Our office uh, is, I, could, I saw the Department of Transportation front door from the office that I was in visiting. And uh, so, you know, in the auto industry, certainly the Department of Transportation has a big role to play. Uh, the, the private sector, the government sector, uh, all aspects of uh, of what people do intersect and so um, I started uh, as he as was indicated by Professor Jekko that uh, in environmental engineering and and I had a passion for that because in the 70s uh, our environment wasn't very good in the United States and uh, it was something that bothered me a lot personally and it was an opportunity that I had to come here um, also minored in structural and, and actually maybe enjoyed those classes more than environmental. But that opportunity came up when there was an environmental episode in our plants at that time. I didn't work for them, but the Chrysler plants in Kokomo. And uh, so I got asked to come uh, to help fix that problem. It's a long way to go from being an environmental engineer dealing with oil getting into a creek to being uh, a manufacturing head that's not Normally, you would think of a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer, not a civil engineer. But as the course of things occurred over over the course of time, I've had probably, you know, it's a big company, uh, 20 different jobs. Every two years, it was something. It's a similar what what's already been shared, is that opportunity came, is to be available and be willing to accept change. Because change is going to happen no matter what you do. Uh, and if you're willing to embrace that change, an opportunity comes. And I, again, I had no particular path intentions. I did not. Nor did I expect to be in the role that I'm in today. But I can tell you this, the start at Purdue was huge for me personally. I came off a farm, um, like maybe, maybe some of you, just uh, small town, big town, it really doesn't matter. But you interact with lots of people. And, I don't know if it's changed, but I felt like the courses here at Purdue were tough. Does that change? It's pretty easy now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what, that challenge that brings you is a big deal in terms of preparing you. The, the, the people that we hire that are Purdue grads, I'm biased, but I can see the difference. We can see the difference in their performance level because they have been challenged. And, uh, and so, again, I just really encourage you to do that. My 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 success, I would say again, is built around uh, your hard work, brace opportunity. Um, I have a strong faith. I believe in that has been a big role in my life. But uh, again, all of those things. Uh, and the other aspect of this again is this connection with people. It is so important to know and 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 be willing to ask for help and to give help. Uh, whether it's in your role as, as, as you do as students, but that, that giving and helping is really important for you as you move forward. So. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next we have structural engineering. Let's go make right it, ahead. Make it a little easier to see uh, each of you. Now, I don't know if David's negative experience in structure is because I was his CE270 TA. <laughs> here, so I don't know if that's... A, Maybe I drove, drove them away from structure, but uh, 
just out of curiosity, how many of you have been doing some interviews for jobs uh, this semester or last? How many of you have been asked the question, uh, what's your, what's your long-range five-year plan or ten-year plan in an interview? So my, my path looks absolutely nothing like if that question were asked to me what I would have ever answered to it. So uh, I got my bachelor's here in 89 in structure, stayed on, did some research with Mark Bowman for AISC. Um, on, on some welded connections and uh, what I do today actually is I have a very small company we're based in Holland Michigan and the one thing we do is we help structural engineers find and hire other structural engineers we're basically a recruiting company my daughter who's a senior in high school I told her once well, we're a headhunter and uh, that, that question came up in one of her classes, what does your dad do or mom do or whatever? She said, my dad's a headhunter and you should have seen the looks that she got. <laughs> um, so we do that and we do continuing education for structural engineers. So uh, through web-based seminars. Now, there's no way in my, my wildest dreams that I ever think I was going to be doing that when I got out of school here. So I spent, uh, after I got out, I spent about three and a half years as a design structural engineer up in western Michigan felt a little like a square peg in a round hole as a design engineer, was struggling with what to do next. By chance, I was fortunate enough to be utilizing some fairly innovative new software at the time called Ram Steel, the new building design that I'd just gotten off of doing a, a, a museum up in Kalamazoo. And I said, I wonder if this company might be interested in hiring somebody. So they were based in Southern California. I just called them up and I said, hey, is there any chance you might be looking for a structural engineer? The company was about five people at the time. And uh, so they took a chance on me, and I started with them back in 1995. My wife didn't want me taking the job. My wife is a Purdue civil engineer on the environmental side. We joke because uh, we have the same degrees, and we can't figure out one single thing of what the other person does to be able to do. But um, you know, I was going to be traveling a lot, so the way I convinced her I'd do it is I said, well, let me just try it for six months. And uh, six months ended up becoming 12 years. So. Um, how I got into recruiting then as I was traveling around the country selling structural engineering software was uh, all the time I get people asking me, hey, do you know any good structural engineers looking for work? And so I started to ask them a little bit more about how they were trying to find them. And some were using recruiters and they would all say, oh, we can't stand using recruiters. They don't understand anything about structural engineering. So, you know, I started just connecting the dots saying, well, here, here's maybe an interesting way that I might be able to help the industry doing that. And then uh, economic times can sometimes have you go in certain directions. So I started the company back in 2000, uh, the end of 2006. And it went from everyone in the country wanting to hire a structural engineer in 2006 and 2007 to nobody wanting to hire structural engineers at the end of 2008 and 2009 the great, uh, when we had the great economic downturn. So at that point, uh, because of our background in software, we've been thinking about doing some training things, and then that's how we started our SE University Continuing Education Program. So, just out of curiosity, how many of you are here are instructors? Okay, so pretty big group of you. So, you know, I would say in terms of uh, kind of some advice, uh, I think just like David said, it's, it's follow your passion. And I, what I found is if you find something you really like doing, it doesn't feel nearly as much like work. You're inherently going to be going to do it better, you're going to be more excited about doing it, and you're going to be more successful at it. And then the other thing that came to me this morning as I was uh, on a treadmill over at the Union is, uh, uh, how many of you are in Chi Epsilon, just out of curiosity? Do they still have you make the boards, the Chi Epsilon boards, and in the middle or the, in the circle part, are you supposed to come up with some something about yourself? So I was thinking back to that this morning, and I actually remembered what I had on there. There was three H's, and it was... Uh, hard work, honesty, and humble. And I thought to myself, you know, although there's still three attributes that I thought uh, today, you know, if you kind of keep those in mind as you're going through your career, that hopefully will be be a big advantage for you. So. Okay. Wonderful. I, thank you very much. Okay. All right, Daniel. Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, Dan Lyoti. We're a uh, underground born and tunneling contractor, so uh, maybe the only contractor of the group. Uh, Unfortunately, my father, uh, family business, my father was a civil engineer grad from 57, and uh, he went into sales engineer with some uh, corrugated metal pipe product, Duramco Steel. They had an underground construction division, so my father kind of thought he'd like to get into construction, so that's kind of when the, 
as Telling World uh, started. Uh, I graduated in 85. My father started our business in 1982. So when I got out in 85, I joined uh, my father, Len, and in a company called Midwest Mole. We do underground boring and tunneling, mainly for the sewer line and the water line industry throughout the Midwest. And we kind of have a little presence out in the Washington, D.C. area, Maryland, uh, Virginia area, too. Uh, it's an exciting business. It's, uh, you know, especially the underground business, it's ever-changing. Uh, we, we live and breathe by the geotech. Any, any <coughs> guys specializing in geotech or... Uh, so that's that's kind of our world, uh, you know. Uh, when we're in, in the underground, uh, uh, everything drives what what ground conditions are like. Uh, you know, it, the construction industry is is a great industry. So, uh, you know, a lot of you might go into the engineering side, but uh, the construction is an exciting industry. Uh, it's challenging, and, and it's kind of my passion, especially uh, you know if you're out on a tunnel project and you see the tunnel machine come out and receiving pit. So again, the, the passion, what, what excites, excites you um, is something, you know, you, you should, should look toward. Some of the uh, things that, that probably uh, allowed for my success is, uh, you know, one, having good people. Uh, it's so important to have smarter people uh, that, that, that compared to yourself. Attention to detail. I've always, uh, you know, anything I've done, even you know, people that work under me, you know, check your work not twice, but, you know, check your work three times. Make, you know, it has, it has to be right. So attention to detail of uh, being honest and ethical, uh, everything you do, you know, your, your word is your commitment. If you commit to something, you need to follow through and, and do it. Uh, and, and, of course, I've blessed my faith. is a very strong part of my, uh, my life, and, uh, but very blessed. So okay. thank you. Thank you very much. All right, very good. Rodolfo, all the way from South America this morning. Yes, uh, I was born in Colombia, South America, in the northern part of the country, in Cartagena. I came to Purdue in 1956. I was 16 and a half years old. When I graduated from Purdue in 1960, I couldn't go in into Harry's bar. <laughs> and that was the only bar in West Lafayette. <laughs> so imagine that. <laughs> I have, after I finished my Bachelor of Science degree in 1960, I went home for the first time since 1956. In 1960, the summer, I returned to Cartagena, and I came back to Purdue in the fall to continue my studies here, and I received my Master of Science degree in Civil Engineering in August of 1961. I am very surprised to see you here this morning, especially seeing so many girls studying civil engineering. Mm. In 1960, we were 28 boys and one girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this class I added up the other day, Rodolfo. We're 30.5% female in this class. 30.5. That, that, that beats a lot of averages. Yes. Uh, when I finished, I met here in, at Purdue my best four friends of my life. We continue writing each other's. We send us message nowadays. I wouldn't change those five and a half years that I spent at Purdue for anything. They were great. A lot of work, yes. But we have, at that time, and I hope you have a better group of professors, but we had an excellent group of professors at that time. And I want to say one name here, because still in the it's deep in my heart. 
Professor Gottsweiler. He was such a good professor, was very tough, that he was very near each student. I never forget him when he died. It was, uh, was very hard for me to accept that, but that's life. I went back to Colombia after I finished my master's degree. I have worked, I worked for about 15 years with about four different companies in design, the structural design and construction. There is one thing that I always like, that is teaching. But in Colombia, salaries for professors are not very good. So I was working for a company, for a petrochemical company. But at 7 o'clock, I used to go to the University of Cartagena. I used to teach from 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning. Take the car and go to work. At 5 in the, in the afternoon, come back and teach another class. I used to teach a structural analysis in the morning and pavement design in the afternoon. So I used to get home, a lot of time to prepare the next class, a lot of time with uh, works to check, but was a wonderful time. The students presented my name to the board of directors of the university to be named Dean of the School of Civil Engineering. I was named Dean of the School of Civil Engineering in the University of Cartagena. I was there for two years. I like it very much, but like I said, the company needed me more and more time, the company that I was working for. So uh, I have, after two years, I had to retire <coughs> and go back to the, to the company. I worked for that company for 38 years. The last 25 as president of the company. It's a petrochemical company that makes the raw material to produce plastic pipe, PVC pipe, and many other products. But the PVC production is the one that is most use the PVC. <coughs> I had 12 nephews and nieces that came to Purdue and graduated from Purdue. My daughter also came to Purdue and graduated from Craner School of Management. My son also came to Purdue and graduated from industrial engineering. Everything that I have and everything that I am, I owe it to Purdue. You have made the right choice when you chose Purdue to make your professional studies. I came as a 16 and a half year old kid, I couldn't speak English. I was very good in math. I was very good in chemistry. I was very good in physics. But my English was very bad. Not bad, but very bad. <laughs> so my first year at Purdue, 
was not easy. But that showed me the way that is nothing easy in this life. And the harder things get, the tougher we have to get ourselves. And I have been a very successful professional because Purdue showed me everything that I have to do. I know all of you are going to be success, successful professionals. You are at the best school. Good luck in the future. And tell your family members, your nephews and nieces, and your kids that this is the best school in the world. Thank you. Wow, okay. That's terrific. We appreciate those comments. Makes me feel good, too. You know, I got my PhD here, too, by golly. I'm proud of that one. Get on the bandwagon here. <laughs> Next is Robert Holden. <laughs> I'm Bob Holden. I'm Vice President um, at Westland Engineering in Indianapolis. We're a, a regional uh, environmental firm, so we do wet side engineering. Um, I sat where you all sit in 1990. Okay, I sat in the back left, right up the back row. Okay. <laughs> um, came out of my uh, bad search or my undergrad and uh, a fellow by the name of Ron Lukash and I um, had developed a relationship. He said, you know, you ought to think about going to grad school. And so I did. So I spent two years doing my master's. I did my master's with Bob Jacob. Um, left Purdue in 92, went to the East Coast for a couple of years working in air pollution consulting that was all very regulatory driven. Um, while it was a fantastic opportunity for me, um, it wasn't where my passion was. I was more of a technical person, so I came back, called Bob up and came back to Purdue and did my PhD with Bob. I got out in 98. Um, my wife did a, uh, her pharmacy degree at the same time, so we had two boilers. Um, I'm the only Holden that's ever graduated from that's not a pharmacist. So, and there are quite a few pharmacists. So, um, in 98, I started in Indianapolis working in the wastewater industry, and I've done um, wastewater projects throughout the uh, Midwest. I have about a half a billion dollars worth of constructed wastewater infrastructure as the responsible design engineer. So, I've had a really great career. It's, um, it's been wonderful for me. Um, I guess there are a couple things that I'd leave or I'd like to just impress on you today and I'd like to just um, follow my fellow honorees. Opportunity. You know, throughout the course of my career I've followed opportunity. And one of the things that you'll find when you're out is that responsibility follows ability very quickly. And though responsibility generates opportunity. And it comes in a lot of different forms. And don't be afraid to explore that because those are those are some of the most meaningful projects or career opportunities that you'll get, career moves that you can get. The other thing that I've been impressed with throughout my career is that I've been able to be exposed to a lot of different engineers from a lot of different schools. You all have the benefit of having a Purdue education, and you can't begin to underestimate how valuable that is for you. Um, I don't want to put other schools down, but when you come out, you will be more technically versed than they are, and that's a wonderful asset. Leverage that asset, and you'll have a wonderful career. Thank you. Okay, Robert, thank you. All right, now it's time for you guys to introduce yourselves to our honorees up here. So what we're going to do, we have 15 teams. I'm going to start with team number one, and their project manager is going to stand up, give us your name, introduce your team to us very quickly, and tell us what you're doing in your in your 498 project. Just in a few words. Okay? Okay, so gather your thoughts, everybody. Okay. All right, so is team one ready? Okay, here we go. Here's team one. All right. Yes, yeah, right here. Um, uh, we're team one, and I'm the project manager. Uh, this is our assistant project manager, Jennifer. And the rest of our team members is uh, Lucas, right here. Come on at the end. Uh, Zinwen, right here. Uh, Jennifer again, and Jacob. 
And uh, our focus is on transportation, and uh, we all, everyone in our team is also focusing on structures with uh, the state theater in Lincolnport, Indiana. And we're working on you know, re rehabilitating that to make it a you know a hot spot for the city again. Okay, well, thank you very much. Good. Okay, how about Team Two? Hi guys, I'm Haley Smith, and I'm the project manager of Team Two. And Sarah is our assistant project manager, and we have Tim and Tom as and I as our transpo people, and then we have Harsh, Felix, and um, Sarah as our structured people. And what we're kind of trying to do um, from a transportation perspective is improve the traffic flow um, around the uh, downtown districts for the State Theater as, we're, as the Logan Sports trying to get a lot more activity, um, revitalize uh, the economic development and whatnot down there. So we're trying to make sure that that can be um, satisfactory and good. And then from a parking perspective, Tom and Tim are working really hard on trying to get a lot more parking generated. I'm working on a shared parking usage um, with a lot that is currently used by a business that operates from 8 to 5. And we're working on a sharing parking agreement that will be from 5 and on and on weekends for the state um, theater because that's where the shows are. And then um, Tom's working on a parking lot design for ADA compliance usage um, that's right next to the state theater. So that will be really good for um, anyone that needs to use that. Um, space and can easily get into the state theater and be accessible and structures people working really hard on now analyzing the walls and the, the roofs and foundation and <laughs> 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 okay. trying okay. to figure that all out. Thank you, Hayden. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Team three. Okay. Hi, I'm Alexander. I'm the assistant product manager. Um, we're missing a couple of people today, but this is Chase, Li Feng, and Brendan, and we're missing Audra and uh, Jeff. So we're also doing structures and transportation. So um, as part of the structures portion of the team, I'm here to do tech. Um, Chase is working on masonry, and then we have another member working on restructure and the big beams in the building. Um, and then from a transportation perspective, we're doing um, a parking solution for the state theater as well as some, as well as some new pavement solutions. OK, thank you very much. All right, team four. Hi, I'm, I'm Doug. I'm the assistant project manager. Our project manager is out today, um, but our team will scatter around, so if you're part team, four, raise your hand. <laughs> so we're, we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're split into two groups, like the structural group and the architectural group. So the structure group is making sure the, the theaters up to up to part, up to codes, and um, everything's uh, structural structurally fine. Um, and our architectural group is um, making sure the HVAC is efficient and when we're in properly. We're also um, working on the mystery water um, pump to help uh, just uh, make sure we're using uh, as efficiently as possible in the electricity standpoint and everything like that. So, yeah. Okay, thank you team four. Team five. Hi, I'm Jeff, I'm the PM. This is Gwen, the APM. We're the architectural team. Pretty much the same thing they're doing. We have our split up architectures here, structures here. We're just trying to make an efficient building and make sure it doesn't collapse. <laughs> okay, very good. Team six. Uh, hi, I'm Patrick. Uh, I'm the project manager for Team Six. We are also doing architecture. So, uh, Kayla, Natalie, and Mike are doing a full structural analysis of the building. Um, Matthew and Wilson are doing uh, heating and air conditioning to try to make the building more efficient and save the owner money. Uh, myself and Tyler are doing life safety improvements that involve uh, new fire sprinkler systems and improving our display. Great, thanks, Team Six. Team Seven. Hello, I'm the project manager, Brian Rogers, is my project manager for Team Seven. Um, Christian's our assistant project manager. Um, so for the structures, um, CC is looking at the roof and the beams and everything. Drew is looking at the masonry walls and looking at the geotype and foundation and everything. Eileen uh, is looking at some stormwater drainage issues. Um, so the, the theater's flooding and at times of high rain. There are times that went up to like the 13th row, so we're trying to figure out how to improve um, the stormwater issues. And then Christian's looking at um, improving the green space around the theater. Okay, thank you, Team 7. Team 8. Hi, I'm Jacob Whitting. I'm the project manager of Team 8. Um, myself, Gunther, and Gordon and I are doing the uh, structural analysis of the existing state theater building. Uh, we're evaluating it for today's codes and design standards. And then uh, CJ and then there's a business project manager, and she and Neil McLean back here are working on stormwater management systems and how to mitigate 
flooding that happened with the south end of their uh, um, building and in the parking lot. We're trying to find solutions for that. And Natalie here is working on a green space addition to the downtown building floor area, specifically a park um, that's about two blocks away. Okay, great, Timmy. Thank you. Team 9. Hi, I'm Sissy Funklet. I'm the project manager of Team 9. Uh, we have the same topics. TJ Harris is their project manager. I'm working on the stormwater design. Sam's working on green space. And Harry, Jimmy, and Wei Jay are working on the structural analysis. Great, thank you very much, Sissy. Team 10. Hello, I'm Michael Timberlake. I'm with Team 10. Our team is kind of scattered around back here, too. Um, but we're working on designing an addition to the building. So analyzing the existing structure, um, the structural steel components, and the masonry, um, and then working on designing in the, the alleyway space that's adjacent to the building, um, an additional space for dressing rooms, um, storage space, additional eating space, and, and tenant space for the theater to utilize. Um, so getting a bit of architectural design there. Great. Thanks, Team 10. Team 11. Uh, my name is Claire Wolfenbrink, uh, project manager for Team 11. Over here is our assistant project manager. So we have Kevin, Joy, Sidai, Shitong, and I believe Kayla is out today. Uh, so we're working on uh, analysis of the walls of the current building, kind of improvement of their um, exterior and interior appearance, and then also an addition in the currently empty alleyway to accommodate some extra bathrooms that are up to code, some dressing rooms uh, for the theater so they can expand into more live performances, and some apartment spaces for traveling acts. Thank you. Team 12. Hello, my name is Brandon Holmes. I'm the project manager for Team 12. This is Quarantine, our uh, APM. <coughs> this is Annie, Charlie, Ashley, and Adam. Uh, we, as well as the previous two teams, are working on that alleyway addition to the building. <coughs> that will expand the uh, performance capabilities. We're also factoring in a restaurant slash rooftop bar area as well. Okay, thank you. Team 13. Hello, we're Team 14. 14. Okay. And we're mainly focusing on the structural design of the, of the theater. Also, we're also focusing on the electric, uh, renovating the electrical panels, electrical system of the whole building, as well as the interior design of the, of the building. Okay, very good. And we'll ask you to be I'm the project manager. My name is Matthew Mahat. Uh, uh, the structural team is uh, Javier, myself, and Merrick. We're working on the structural evaluation of the overall uh, theater. Our team is also focused into implementing new audio and system, uh, no, audio and sound system uh, with the uh, <coughs> of Valerie and the uh, geotech and the cost logistics. Being done by our season project manager. Okay, great, thank you. And I miss Team 13. All right. So I'm Dave Magarisi. I'm from Team 13. We're all scattered around over here. And we're working on the interior amenities for the theater and also the structural integrity of it itself. So we're working on the masonry walls, the steel beams, the foundation, and all that stuff. And for the interior amenities, it's a very old building from the 1880s, or it was renovated in 1940, but we want to make it more modern. So we're Looking at implementing a new bar and a new stage lighting system for it. Okay, great, thank you. All right, there, so there you know what the, what the class is doing this semester. Now it's time for you to ask some questions of our honorees. They told you what their passions were, what they what they did, the hard work, honesty, being humble, and so on. Questions, questions. Who's got a question? Okay. Yes, sir. Stand up. Tell us who we are and fire away. <coughs> Okay. Hi, I'm Austin, I'm from Team 13. Um, I've often been told that once you're in industry and young in the industry, you should find a uh, mentor. So I was wondering if you guys had any mentors and how did you go about getting your mentor? Okay, very good. Anybody? Just time right in. I've had two significant mentors in my life. One of them sitting right here to my right. Uh. <laughs> um, and that was an opportunity that found me. Uh, the, the second one that I have is called my name is Roger Ward, who is a, a long-time um, wastewater practitioner. And he and I found each other just in, at HNTV where I was working at that point in time. Yeah, I also have um, several mentors throughout my career, too. Uh, obviously, one of my mentors, I, the person I really respect a lot is uh, Dr. John Fricker, my uh, PhD advisor. Even now, um, as I'm doing a lot of stuff, um, you know, I, about time to time, when, when there's come to difficult 
illustration. I started remember early on in my career. I was sending an email and asking for a hint about. I think mentor definitely is will all be very useful because they are the one who has done before, who has the experience, and who can provide a really sound advice. So, so definitely encourage you to find a mentor too. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have uh, two mentors <coughs> that I can never forget. <coughs> one was Professor Gottsweiler, and the second one was the person that I used to work for in for five years in a design and construction company in Colombia that he was a civil engineer that graduated in Colombia but his master's degree was here at Bolivia and we had you know he he was about 20 years older than myself, and I learned many, many things from him. Okay. Let me ask this. Let me expand the question that was asked. How do you find a mentor? How do you? How do you? How does that happen? Is it just by chance? You happen to be in the right place at the right time, or did you make an effort to, to find a mentor? What, what's What's the pathway to finding a mentor? A, okay, go ahead, Brian. For, for me. Uh, I probably three mentors. I can't leave my grandfather out as being a mentor, you know, molding my my thinking. But in the, in the industry, had a gentleman named Dale Smallboy, who was a great engineer. Um, and it, and I think it was uh, kind of a, he gave me opportunity by seeing again hard work, and and that match was natural personalities match, interest match, and passion for the job. And then the, the second one, the third one, would be our current CEO, which is Sergio Marchioli, and similar kind of thing. And, and seeing a bit for me is is watching them, somebody that I can really look up to and think, gee, if I could be like that, or I could have those attributes. And, and cultivating that, it happens somewhat naturally. Yeah, I'd say the same for me with somewhat natural. Uh, one was Mark Bowman here at Purdue. Uh, approaching me about doing some research for AISC, which uh, I've, I've kept in touch with Mark uh, over the years, so that's been a great uh, mentoring opportunity. Another, uh, not uh, necessarily career-wise, but my father passed away unexpectedly from a heart attack when uh, he was 38, I was 13, so uh, that was right before I was in eighth grade, but when I came to Purdue, I was fortunate enough to get into the co-op program, and I lived with my aunt and uncle down in Indianapolis for uh, five semesters, and my uncle as well as my aunt, just, uh, you know, wonderful people. And so, you know, finding uh, finding a personal side of things that somebody you can really, uh, you know, learn a lot from. And then in terms of uh, work, I would say it was more of when I got to the company that I was back, kind of seeing the people that I thought were real leaders and great people and just being able to, to work under them and learn from them. Okay, very good. Uh, you know, probably uh, get involved with associations. Uh, it's a great opportunity here. A lot of the, whether it's the construction associations, highway associations, uh, engineering, so ASCE group, they have the monthly luncheons. And you know, the problem is, even my office, everybody's so busy, and it's just, you know, even people, the young, younger people in my office, they don't go out and do these things because they're so busy. But that's kind of how I met so many people uh, through life, whether it was a, a morning Bible study group or, or a, a lunch. Or, but really, it, it's just kind of, I think if you get out and you get involved and you meet people, I think you'll run into people that can become mentors for you. Okay, very good. I think we have time for maybe one more question. Someone wants to ask another question. Please stand up and tell us who you are and ask a question. Hi, my name is Amy Chen. Um, I was wondering like, what literature and publications you like to consume regularly to kind of inform um, not only like, your career decisions, but also like how you want to go about you know, and just living your best life. <laughs> Okay, what you what do you what do you read? I guess is the question. What do you read? What do you read? What's your what's your library? Yeah. So I uh, I guess I'll start off. Uh, you know, there's some most of mine are well, I'll say professional development type of books. Uh, Good to Great is an interesting one that talks about companies that have done some very interesting things. Uh, Newcore happens to be one of them that's highlighted in that book. Um, being in sales and business development, there, I've read a lot of different sales and 
sales book. Zig Ziglar is one of his sayings is the motto we use for our company, which is if you help enough other people get what they want in life, you can have anything you want in life. So I've read a bunch of his stuff, and then there's another person, uh, Jeffrey Gittimer, that's like a book on yes attitude and other things. So um, you know that that's been some of my life. Okay, very good. So I, so I do a lot of uh, technical reading uh, and so forth, anything that's related to transportation, transportation safety, uh, that's part of my um, life I need to keep up in order to, um, you know, I think that, that that's one of the things I never stop learning. Um, but in addition to that, I do a lot of reading um, on issues related to leadership and, and so forth. I think that's important too because it, I really believe no matter who you are, no matter what you do, as a, you know, whether or not you what company you're going to wind up with is you can always be a leader in the position that you are at and I think that's very important and uh, you know so lead, reading leadership book, reading um, team building book, um, those are very important too. Um, also on the, on the daily basis I read uh, devotional uh, material too. A lot of times I think as we go through life um, you know especially in, in the position that many of us are right now is a decision we make could impact someone's um, income to in, impact someone's family and so forth. So, and I think that that just had that ability to to be able to make some decision because um, because you know everything you do because you know it can really impact someone. So, so we want to go through those very very carefully. So I think just a, a variety of things. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. I'll tell you what, uh, we got to move along, but. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here this morning. Let's give our honorees a nice round of applause.